Good morning, I'm at Gen Con right now. I am at Gen Con, I'm in a, a room. Uh, this is like one of the basic, one of one of the meeting rooms, actually it's a tech room, uh, the hotel. My hotel internet wasn't fast enough, so Greg Heinzel, who's the god of IT and technology and programming and everything at Gen Con, he hooked me up with one of the uh, rooms in the computer bay that they had, didn't quite need yet, so they crowbarred me in here. And so I'm so excited. Yes, we are, um, yeah, I think this might actually be the first Gen Con event. I'm calling it a Gen Con event. I, it's, it's, you know, what the heck. I wasn't going to miss the opportunity to uh, stream this week. Uh, so excited to be at Gen Con. This is so cool. Yes, I am at the Indiana Convention Center. And, wow, I, I, hope, uh, I hope to see many of you here live, like not just on Twitch, uh, in person. I'll be running around like crazy, you know, playing games, doing things. Uh, good morning, uh, uh, Heto, Hetoric, Hetoritic. <laughs> good, sorry if I mispronounced. I'm still sort of developing the skill of reading Twitch uh, names. And um, hello, Jay Bruce. Yes, Josh, good to see you. All right. It is, um, yes, it is a Monday morning here in Indianapolis, and we are, the whole crew is here. I got to hang out with the staff last night, sort of like our, our pre lap before the race begins. Uh, everybody just so excited. You know, most of our staff now is virtual, and we don't actually don't have an office anymore in Seattle. So everybody, uh, it's like it's rare to get everybody in the same place at the same time. It's just fun to hang out with everybody and see what everybody's up to. I'm a little nervous about my setup here. I'm streaming without a monitor. Usually, you know, you have a, um, you know, you have your, your one, your laptop, and everything. All the the guts is going. And you got like a monitor with the, the big screen showing everything. And um, I'm doing everything on, on one screen, and so everything's kind of small, and I got to flip through, uh, uh, f trying to find windows and all that stuff. Uh, so yeah, Josh, I I hope we do get a chance to meet sometime this week. Um, uh, I don't know if you're going to be at the Dinah Jones Award party. If you're going to be there, I'll be there. Uh, anybody looking to find me, that's a really good place to find me because I'll be there from the beginning all the way till late. Other than that, who knows? It's a, you know it's a big show these days. It's hard to keep up with everything going on i have no idea i'm i'm embarrassed to admit i have no idea half the stuff that happens at my show i i mean it's just too it's too big i mean i'm not complaining that it's big of course i mean that's that's great this is like you know the gathering of the tribe you know the tribe us geeks and uh it's great that um there are so many more of us than there used to be that you know we are such an important part of popular culture now we have a voice um it's it, it's great so well um hey uh if you're watching anytime you know say hi in chat so i know you're here uh happy to hang out and chat a little bit but hey you're here to watch me play civ today so we're gonna hi uh darger or dar jr one uh, hi and uh sarah sarah lonslot Sir Lan okay, I got it. Yeah. Sir Lancelot. <laughs> um, yes, we've already begun setting. Uh, we're working at will call. Okay, good, good. Um, appreciate everybody helping to make this show a reality. It's so I'm so proud of it, as you can all tell. So, um, so I am going to be playing Civ Five today. Some of you who were watching a few weeks ago, Mike Murrow was playing Civ Six. I didn't finish that game. I will get back to it. But my father passed away recently, and he and I played a lot of Civ Five together. He taught me, actually, he introduced me to the Civilization franchise and got me hooked on Civ Five. And uh, we never played Civ Six. He never made the transition to Civ Six. So um, I don't know. I feel a little closer to him. I feel like there's something I can do to um, uh, in his his honor. I think he would. Um, I don't really, you know, I'm, I don't really believe in the afterlife. But you know, if, he, if there is an afterlife and he's looking down, I think he'd be excited to see me playing Civ Five and would uh, remember uh, those sorts of things, those times we spent together. Uh, let's see, going uh, Dar Junior, going back with a dear friend that I first played D and D with in 1981 with my older sister. Run, nice, good. Well, I hope you have a great time uh, here at Gen Con. All right, so let's get uh, Civ Five cranked up. 
There. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Okay, let's load the game. PVM, China. Play vs. Machine. Peter vs. Machine. China, turn 160. That looks like the game we were playing where I left off. So, yeah, so this is uh, Civ 5. It is a... Um, uh, it is a bit simpler than Civ 6. The biggest difference is that there is no city districts. Everything you build, you don't have to build districts in your city. Everything you build is just automatically in that, in the, the center hex. Um, and the rest of that, all your other hexes of your city are, are tiles that you just work. And uh, um, so that makes the game a bit simpler. So I am playing China. It's still a very big, complex game, right? It's like only when you compare it to Civ 6 does it seem a little simpler but it's it's a big game i'm in playing um at epic speed i always play at epic speed i just like more time between turns and and stuff to actually use my units before the next uh era comes along i have um uh i'm playing on level seven immortal so in civ there's levels one through eight so seven i think is Pretty, it's pretty challenging for me, and uh, in fact, in the last game, um, uh, Civ uh, Nick Christie was on, on in chat. Uh, I think he was disappointed in me that um, I made uh, a certain, went down a certain fork in the road on the tech tree uh, that he thinks was going to cost me the game. Probably, maybe he is right. We'll see. Um, I when I used to play Civ Five a lot. Um, I wasn't good enough to win on, on level 8 deity, but I would win on s level 7 about half the time. And But I realized, so I said when I decided to do this game, I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to start on level 7 because I, it's about a 50-50 shot. But since I hadn't played it in like two years, uh, I seriously handicapping myself. But hey, who cares? Um, I'm playing China. China has um, some abilities I really like. It, it has the best great generals in the game. It generates great generals faster uh, than um, most civs than other civs do. It also has a great medieval era unit called the Chokunu, which is a replacement for the crossbow that gets to fire an extra time per round. And if you're a gamer, you know it's like to get an extra attack per round, no matter what game it is. That's that's good. Um, so I'm not gonna. I I'm here to teach the game, but I'm building on what I've already um, uh, taught in the last two sessions of playing so five so I'm not going to recover all the basics um, if you're interested if this piques your interest and you're interested in learning more about Civ 5 um, you can watch the previous two videos uh, they're on Gen YouTube on Gen Con video channel also there are other streamers out there I'm flattered you're watching me because there are other streamers out there who are better at this game than I am I guess if I have something to offer is that I'm gonna play a little bit slower. Like I've tried to be slower than the other streamers because sometimes they're just so fast. It's like things are going by. Maybe it's my age. I don't know. I just can't keep up. So um, I will explain what's new uh, in uh, that we discovered today that I haven't explained in the prior episodes. Um, but I'm not gonna start all over. Or we'll we'll never get anywhere. Uh, sorry about that. Okay. So just to recap the situation, I have four cities that I. The three cities that I built, that's a pretty good uh, one thing in Civ 5 compared to Civ 6 is you tend to want less cities because there is a penalty on your science and culture uh, based on how many cities you have. So you don't want any more cities than what's necessary. Um, and I have a fourth city, uh, which is Tenochtitlan, which is, that doesn't sound Chinese, does it? It sounds Aztec. In fact, it was the capital of the Aztec Empire. Um, the Aztec Empire is still in play. They've got uh, Tlaxcalco, but um, uh, I have their capital, and we have sent suit for peace, and everything is fine. I, I won't say that that knocks the Aztecs completely out of the game. I think it means they won't be a player for a while, but they will recuperate, and they will probably at some point uh, think they're strong enough to attack me. <laughs> Maybe they will be. We'll, we'll find out. But um, uh, if you, I didn't wipe them completely off the map because um, I get you get really big diplomatic penalties for white for completely destroying a civilization so I stopped short of that they will uh, probably start settling cities again in places that annoy me uh, so but uh, that that's the situation 
Um, we are um, in the close to medieval era. Maybe we're still in the classical era. Let's say looking at the tech tree, we are barely in the medieval era. I just finished reading, um, uh, researching metal casting. Um, Nick was telling me I should have gone for civil service and, edu and then education first, and he might be right. Uh, but I don't know, I just feel like you go to metal casting at your workshops, and once you build workshops in all your cities, you can build everything else faster. So the sooner you do that, the better, right? Maybe not. I don't know. We'll find out. Civil service will give lots of bonuses to population growth, and uh, science is based partially on your population, so that's good. And then um, uh, the, we will be lined to education after civil service to get um, uh, universities, which will be another science boast. Science is all important uh, in civilization. Um, in fact, it might be more important in Civ 5 than it is in Civ 6. We'll find out. Um, so, that is, I would love to stop, take time to go over and grab physics and try to get Notre Dame, but I think that, I think I just have to face the fact that playing a level 7, it's pretty hard, unless you have a great engineer, it's pretty hard to um, build a wonder and uh, and beat other civs to that wonder because they have advantages and are going faster on the tech tree than I am. Uh, so I probably won't be well if I get a great engineer, great, and then I'll, then I might think about a wonder, but I'm not going to um, worry about that right now. Okay, so we are um, in the Middle Ages, just barely in the medieval ages. Um, I am playing for a domination strategy, which means, you know, in civilization there are several different ways, science victory, culture victory, etc. I'm going for domination victory, which means that uh, it's a warlike victory, you know, condition, why not? Um, I have to ultimately take the capital of every civ in the game. So I've taken the capital of the Aztecs, um, I need to take capital of the Carthaginians, which are up here in the northwest corner of the map. I had in the previous stream toyed with the idea, said maybe I'm going to go up and fight with the Carthaginians a little bit. I probably can't take their capital right now, but the Carthaginians have a unique unit at this era of uh, of time called the African Elephant Unit or something like that, uh, and it's pretty tough. And I don't think I'm strong enough. If they've got a herd of those things. Or, or uh, I don't think I'm strong enough to go messing with that. So, problem is right now, even though I have a lot of great archer units, I probably have five or six, I think I have six archers. Um, I don't have much in the way of ground force to protect them, especially from Carthaginian's unique elephant unit. Um, maybe I will go and harass the Persians a little bit, but really I need to kind of focus on consolidating the terrain I've gotten, make sure I'm building. I don't want to take building away from important infrastructure stuff like I'm building right now workshops in every city. I mean, I you know, that was the thing I said to Nick. I was like, well, I want to build the workshops, so I build everything else faster. Um, I get, I, so I better go ahead and build those workshops ASAP. And then uh, when, um, uh, and I, but I do need to pop out a few more military units along the way and get uh, a slightly bigger army so that I can not only, like like right now, I'm scouting my borders. I got the um, addition of the Persians up to the north, northeast, um, who will have no, would have no problem coming down and spanking my butt. Um, or, and I also have the Swedish, the Swedes up here and I think the Brazilians over here. So um, I really need, I don't wanna discover that, that they're about to attack me when they're on my border. The key here is to have scouting units kind of on this periphery watching uh, so that if they come after me that I see them coming and have um, a couple of turns to repair and start moving units to the right location. But. Fortunately, I don't. There's nobody really to my west, and the Carthaginians are kind of on the other side of the Aztecs and are quite a ways away. I'm not going to say that I don't not worried about them, but um, I really this is the border I really need to watch. So the problem is having enough units to spread. If, if I if I go attack somebody, then I got to get all my military units. You know, I, I need enough military units that I can bring together a really good force to go after somebody and leave some people to watch the places that um, I'm not paying attention to. So 
that's the dilemma there. Um, I am currently at war with Brazil. I mean, with Sweden. I'm not like fighting them or anything, but I'm technically at war. What happened is Persia attacked Sweden and they asked me if I wanted to join them. Uh, so, and I said, yeah, sure. Not because I knew I would get anything out of it. Like I wasn't gonna be able to go up there and get any of their cities or anything like that. Also, um, uh, but mainly because if the Persians are busy fighting the Swedes, then they're not coming after me. So it seemed like a good defensive maneuver to do, especially while I was fighting the Aztecs. Now that I'm not fighting the Aztecs, um, I'm, I'm not too worried uh, about, you know, there's nothing to be gained by that war. So um, at, whenever I get the opportunity, I will probably uh, sue for peace with them. Not, yeah. So um, I ended on my turn. So there's the next turn button. I'm going to press that and see what happens. Next. Okay, we're into new territory. We're moving moving forward into uh, into the next turn. And there's Sweden <laughs> offering peace. I just said maybe I'll sue for peace with Sweden soon. Uh, oh, but look at the deal he's offering me. He will give me, the left column is what he will give me, which is a peace treaty. The right column is what he's suggesting I give him, which is a peace treaty and 14 gold pieces per turn plus four luxury resources plus horses plus iron in peace with all his allied city states or all my no peace with somebody anyway yeah no this is typical in Civ 5 when the AI says you want to make peace they ask you for a whole bunch of stuff usually they don't mean it if you just delete all these things off of what you're to provide and just break it down to a simple treaty of peace plus yes we'll make We'll, we'll be peaceful with all the city states involved and let's see if he accepts that he did okay so we're now at war with sweden i mean at peace with sweden and uh we're not at war with any of his allied city states and vice versa oh the aztecs well okay so the aztecs are really mad at me i mean i did take their capital uh raise one of their cities and leaving them with just one city and um so he, this is just this is just his way. This is the computer's way of saying, by the way, these guys still don't like you. Like, okay, yeah, very well, fine. Um, I'm, I'm not here to make friends. <laughs> okay, so this first turn is gonna take me a moment as I kind of figure out what I want to do. Oh, I remember, I have this army here because I just destroyed a barbarian camp that was up there. And in fact, I think I got some goodwill with Sidon for doing that. In fact, it's showing that we are allies, which is what the green icon there means. Um, so that's cool. I think what I want to do is... One thing you always have to worry about is any place near your cities that you can't see, like this train down here, that barbarians can spawn there uh, and don't want that to happen. So I do have good, I do have a lot of the territory around. See like, you know, these, you can see the, diff the difference between these two hexes. They're both planes. The only difference is, is that this hex uh, is visible. By the way, I didn't check to see. Can you see my mouse when I'm scrolling around? I don't know if you can or not. Uh, when I switch to another window to see what the output looks like, I can't do that at the same time. So um, um, anyway, uh, uh, I think what I want to do is start coming back with this guy and probably going to spread out a little bit. I have my, my super scout. I'll have I just want to get somebody down in this area. Since I'm not at war, I have the luxury of being able to um, watch more carefully uh, where uh, my what's happening out in the wilderness. So we're going to spread out a little bit. And um, this guy, I'm just going to leave him here to heal. And let's go. Yeah. Um, okay, this worker's done doing developing that tile let's go down and work on this one down here and i have scouts running around just uh it's good basically my goal with the scouts that i have exploring is that i want to see the whole i want to eventually learn the entire map what's where um okay what was that i'm not sure okay ragusa wants first they can Keep on wanting that, and we have peace. Okay. 
Uh, yeah, I have a... Let's see. I think I'm going to see if I can get open borders with Carthage so that um, we can... Uh, I can explore the territory in her cities. And I'll offer her open borders in return. Let's just propose that. Yep, that deal works. Okay, that's that means that that's... By the way, that tells me something else. It tells me that even though I wiped out or wiped out a lot of the Aztecs, um, that she doesn't really care. <laughs> Otherwise, she wouldn't. Uh, she probably would not have um, uh, done that deal. One thing I want to do at this stage is develop into farms as much of the terrain that's beside rivers as possible in my city. So that's why I'm hit down there. I want to develop, develop this into a farm. I might even buy out some of these other hexes, um, but not until I need to. And because when I get civil service, which I'm working on right now, we'll get in um, five, six turns. Um, with civil service, all of your farmlands that are by a river produce an extra food. And that's pretty huge. Uh, okay, it's like that. That was just alerting me that some of the, my workers that were on things had just had finished up. If you're think, if you know this game, you're thinking to yourself, Peter, you have too many workers. Um, you might be right. <laughs> I tend to buy more workers than I need. Uh, I just, I don't know. I just think that the more workers you have, the faster you're getting all your territory developed and. Um, also, you can, in a pinch, use workers to, um, if, you, you know, if you can't think of anything useful for them to do, then yeah, disband them. You can also use them to, as sentries to uh, watch your borders. Okay, so Beijing, that's my capital. We finished our act, what act? that's really good. Um, happiness is eight. When I do hit civil service, so happiness, every point of population cost you a happiness so even though I have a surplus happiness of eight which is nice it's gonna plummet when my population starts skyrocketing up because of civil service so um, I do want to invest in all of the um, in Coliseums Coliseums but it calls is worth two happiness if you have a Coliseum in every city that's eight happiness which with four cities also, that unlocks building the call it, um, the Circus Maximus. The Circus Maximus is another five happiness on top of that. So, definitely want to do uh, all of that. Okay. I'm trying to think about where I want. Oh yeah, this guy. He's just going to build a farm. Is that this guy? Yeah, he's just going to build a farm there. It's not going to be a great farm because it's not on a river, but we can do what we can. Um, I'm probably going to want to buy this hex just uh, west, northwest of Beijing. This grassland. Grassland's better farmland than plains. And it's on a river. You can barely see it. There's a river there. Uh, so, and I'm going to want to get this one as well at some point. So, uh, this. I don't know how much I want to buy out, though. I only have 127 gold, so I can't really buy out much at all. I probably can't buy anything useful right now. So we'll go uh, develop the other spots. Let me see how much that hex would cost. This little gold coin symbol in the upper left, which pops up costs on... Oh, I can buy that. 125. I think I'm going to buy that. And because these hexes are going to be... These tiles are going to become really important farmland soon. Okay, this guy, you know, this guy's in a nice kind of off the grid spot, but he's got damage on him. I think I'm just gonna have him fortify and heal. And uh, this guy is gonna come back. Okay, I really wanna, st now, now, oh, there's a Persian swordsman. Now that the Persians, uh, are they still at war with, um, that's not telling me. Here we go. At war with Sweden and all their their city states. Okay, so 
uh, they're still at war, but you never know how serious they are about war. We really need to have people up here watching the border between us and the Persians. Um, and it's best to watch it up closer to them so that, you know, if I have these guys really close to Guangzhou, um, that's nice, but that means the Persians could advance much further uh, before I spot them. So it's, I like to have the scouts out a ways. So, oh, this, see, this is a great place to have a unit. So there's a gap here, um, and I can see all the hexes in that gap. There's a mountain there. They can't go through the mountains, unless they're Carthage, by the way. Um, there's a city-state here. The city... Um, the civs don't tend to march armies through city-states. I don't know if that's really an absolute rule, but it seems to be the case. Yeah, I was healing this guy up, but I think I want to... There's really no reason to watch this area, so I think I'm going to have him go heal up somewhere else. Yep, okay, so we've got a... Oh, look at the Aztecs have settled another city. I, I told you they were going to settle another city somewhere. That's annoying. So this actually makes it even more difficult for me to go after Carthage because um, I'd have to go through kind of these narrow gaps. I mean, Aztecs are probably not going to give me open borders. And... Um, I'd hate to be on the other side of the Aztecs, and the Aztecs have gotten strong enough to think that they can come after me. Okay, let's... Yep. So, it's not going to be anything too exciting for a little while. Let's see, Geeky Broken Hoodie, hi! Hi, Peter. So excited to see you in person in a few days. I'll be at the Gooey Cube. Gooey Cube? No, how about Gooey Cube? Uh, mixer and game show. Great. Well, I will see you there. I can't wait. I'm playing, I think, Friday morning. It's written down. Don't worry. I do know what it is. I just don't have it memorized. And uh, I get to play with uh, my good friend Gabriel Mondo Vega. And I think, um, and Stefan Picorni, I think, is in that game, too. So, really, really looking. Two of my favorite people will be there. So, definitely looking forward to that. Okay, yeah. Go ahead, build a farm. And... What are you doing next? Okay. Okay, yeah, this is up to the board of the Persians. I really want to get up here somewhere this guy and I and the other thing that will happen is that but if you're watching the, the border of another Civ and they, they can see your army there that that reduces the chance that they will um, come after you like they, if they if you're doing a show of force so that's cool another good reason to do that okay let's go up here and see what we see Carthaginians are up to. Um, yes, Mondo said he's going to try to drag you to the mixer on Thursday night. Yeah, well, um, that's going to be tricky. I already am double booked for two different dinners on Thursday night. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that'll be tricky. Uh, yeah, so... Uh, Okay, yes, we're here ready to do this farm that's on the grassland next time. River. That's going to be a really good farm. Grasslands do the best farms, and then on a river, once you get civil service. Uh, oh, what, what does Attila have to say? My disappointments with Nebuchadnezzar the second have become too much to bear. Oh, 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 I'm so sorry. This is a situation that can only be resolved on the battlefield. Yeah, I get that. As China, I get that. I'm not making statements about China in the real world. I'm talking about playing China in this game. Will you join me, friend? Uh, uh, sorry, sorry, uh, but I just, yeah, no, I, I don't really want to do that. Um, uh, the reason is, is that I don't, um, there's, no, there's no upside for me, you know, upsetting the, the, the Babylonians. And they're both in their side, so there's really nothing for me to gain. It's not like I'm motivated 
you know, with the uh, with the Persians, I allied with the Persians against the Swedes because I want the Persians to go that way instead of after me. It's because we're next to each other, uh, but I'm not next to the Babylonians or the Huns there. Uh, if you want to look at the big map, oh, well, that's that's not going to work. There's a big map here. Um, they're clear in the down in the bottom corner. You can see a really tiny map. Uh, there is um, uh, the Huns and Babylonians way over here on the uh, on the far eastern side, and here's me. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Choose production. Which city? It is Guangzhou. So Guangzhou is a great city. Um, it is uh, because of Lake Victoria. It's a big part of it. Okay, so we have the workshop. Yep, there's the workshop, and this is all the stuff that's in the city. And we have uh, the Colosseum, we have Granary, uh, we have a lot of the important basic stuff. Um, I guess, oh, what's the religion situation? I think I'm like, I think I have a chance of getting a religion, but I have, I've been kind of, admittedly, really half-hearted about it, or did I get my religion? I do have a religion. Okay, I did get my religion. Um, and uh, my beliefs are plus one gold for every four followers of the religion. I like that. I can use faith to produce monasteries, and I get plus one faith on. Oh, I remember the plus one copper on, on copper and salt mines. And I do have some salt mines. I remember that. That was actually from my pantheon belief. Okay, I think I want to take religion kind of seriously. So that means building a temple in every. Uh, if I build this temple in every city. And then that unlocks building the Grand Temple. And the, the temple in every city is going to give me two faiths. So two times four cities is eight faith. The, the Grand T Temple is another eight faith on top of that. So it's a pretty heavy investment, um, uh, investment, investment in production. But then I probably won't have to worry about building any religious stuff after that. Um, I'll be able to build the mosque, but I'll use faith to build that. Uh, oh, so let me catch up on chat just another guy named harry hi hey peter it's that time of year again i'm looking forward to some cool panels and seminars with gen con online some of us still appreciate the outreach those represent oh thank you you have a great day you too i hope you have a great time with the panel i will be on a couple of things i'll be streaming not only now today um, i'm streaming a lot on thursday afternoon well, i'll be streaming for opening ceremonies I'll be streaming on a couple of games Thursday afternoon. Uh, one with my other Table Takes hosts, uh, really look forward to that one, and one with Chris Ody from Zombie Orpheus Entertainment. And then uh, Friday morning with uh, Gooey Cube, and I think that's all the streaming I'll be doing at this show. Um, and so, yeah. Yes, uh, Geeky Broken Hood. I've taken out the Aztec capital, and I raised another one of their cities. So I've really knocked, I've, I've got what I needed because for the domination of victory, you just need every capital. And, um, uh, and the Aztecs still have two cities, but they're effectively out of the game for a while. And um, with great TTRPGs like Marvel Multiverse and Old Gods of Ap oh, Appalachia, yes, Monty Cook's thing finally coming out. Strong presence from Renegade Game Studios. This Gen Con is going to be awesome. Yeah, I agree. I highly recommend it. Okay, this guy's gonna come down, and I really want to get a spotter on these hexes. You know, it's, is this guy almost done? He's almost done. That's actually, if I have too many workers, that's actually a really good use for a worker, is to have a worker come down here and sit here. Um, barbarians will not, the barbarians spawn from a barbarian outpost, the barbarian outpost has to appear in a place that's not visible to anybody, like these hexes down here that are really dark. So um, I really don't want a barbarian outpost showing up here or here. Um, maybe it, it'd be nice not to have one here too, uh, but well, yeah, so we're gonna try to get all these places. Okay, let's see, this guy, let's wanna nudge him over a little bit more. And this guy's gonna come up here, yeah. Gonna, we have enough units to really build a nice uh, shield wall. Um, first Gen Con, been wanting to go for 40 years, finally going with my wife, also her first time. Well, great, excellent. I'm really glad you're here. I hope you guys have a fantastic time. Um, 
I'm very proud of the show. I, I just love it. I think it has such a long, amazing history, you know, going back to, you know, Gary uh, Gaiek started the show back in, uh, oh, I just managed to pick off a little Barbarian Galley with some damage, you know, just, just for the fun of it. Um, you know, so I, um, uh, I mean, I certainly honor Gary for um, him and Dave uh, Arneson creating Dungeons and Dragons, but you know, he also started Gen Con, and uh, so, and that's that's what puts food on my table. So, really, uh, really, happy he did that. You used to play Civilization One. Wow. Yeah, I'm I'm a late, I, I was a late comer to Civilization. I just have this in thing, this thing where I just don't generally like video games and almost as a matter of principle since I'm such a tabletop game company guy you know it's like why well, play video games you know uh, but my dad got me into uh, into Civ and it's really amazing <laughs> and it's like a war game you know it's like a war game but you got to pay attention to all the other factors so I, I just think it's a, an amazing game and so, but yeah, I didn't get in until Civ 5. Okay, this guy is like, okay, I'm gonna have a good worker go down here and watch this area. Um, since I, I am kind of, um, there are tiles here that aren't developed, but if you're not using them, uh, you know, you just want to, you just need one or two more tiles than what you're using. Just, just kind of stay ahead of your population curve is all you really need. Um, and speaking of which, I haven't, every once in a while, every, you know, 20 turns or so, you want to take a good look at your city and make sure that you're working the, uh, the tiles that you want to work. And so you can always take at a glance, what is my surplus food plus six? That's a little less than I would like, um, but uh, it's probably because I've got, oh, I'm still clicking on production. See, this is why you got to do that. Um, up here on the right, you can click as to which type of resource you want it to focus on. And I'm going to switch to food because, uh, and that changes my food surplus to plus nine. That's, that's much better. It will get better still once I have civil service, which is going to be any minute now. Um, I still want to keep the production good enough. Um, this, I have this one locked. That's probably as much production as I need to lock. In fact, I it's I'm gonna pretty much unclick all that's a good way to kind of check is to unclick everything and kind of and then um, have it reset and see where it lands and see are you really happy with this plus nine food yeah that's pretty decent let's look at Shanghai Shanghai is let's see let's um unclick everything and then once you un when you deselect all the population, they go over here to unemployed citizens. You just click on the bar to the left of that. It will re replace everybody where it thinks it should be. I think those are pretty good. I'm not so sure this two food spots that great. You know, Beijing has so here's things you can watch for. Like Beijing has two hexes that are they're basically the same. Um, it doesn't need both of them, where Shanghai really could use something better than this. You know, when you look at your city, I like to look at whichever, which tile is producing the less of the ones that the population are working. So this one, population is working here, it's only two food. If I swap this tile that Beijing doesn't need to me, then it can go there and, oh, it took it off this. I don't want to lose it working on this tile because it's three gold i do need have good gold and it's got you know one one production of one food there we go so now my city growth is four it's not very good okay well it'll get better in a couple in, in a couple turns i'll get the workshop it is actually pretty important to focus on getting the workshop done so maybe i'm just gonna force work this mine okay the food's only plus two that sucks but I'll get the workshop in eight turns, and then we can switch to um, focusing on food. Uh, Guangzhou 
usually has good food because of Lake Victoria here, which is a natural wonder. That's six food all by itself. So this is just, and then I got this tile locked because I got a great scientist and built an academy. This is producing two food and eight science, uh, which is fantastic. Okay, that all looks pretty good. I don't need to have these things locked, or do I? Yeah, I think we're, uh, yeah, we've got some good production without having to lock in that line. Um, all right, and then while we're checking all our cities, let's check Tap Dillon. Um, here, I'm probably worried a bit more about production than food. Although, well, the food's got it, but food plus four is not great, but, uh, I want to get certain things produced. You know, I think I want to move this four, uh, four production over to here. One production, three productions, almost good. And get a little bit more food. This looks pretty good. Um, uh, just another guy named Harry. Okay, I'm just going to call you Harry now, so that's all right. <laughs> I've been to half a dozen Gen Cons. I collect previous catalogs. Oh, yeah, my favorite part thing is the annual Gen Con program book with previews of everything. These days, of course, it's available online, which is great. Yeah, the program catalog, every once in a while, somebody in, in the company says, man, this thing costs a lot of money. Can we just do it online? Like, no, we need the actual program. It's, it's like a souvenir. I mean, I, I have all my program guides going clear back uh, to when I started going to Gen Con. And uh, yeah, I can't imagine not having having the, the souvenir. You know, I think I moved this guy over to here. Whoops. Came from there instead. <laughs> there we go. Okay, did I check all the cities? I think I did. Yeah, started with Beijing. Okay, we're in good shape. Okay, let's go back to Rock and Roll. Um, okay, I'm gonna have, hang, have this guy go here just to check. Make sure I don't have a nasty surprise down here. Once I, uh, then I won't need the archer down here. Let's go out here, see what's there. Oh, they got a little barbarian spearman sitting on the aisle all by himself. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sometimes you just see the weirdest things in this game. Okay, let's come back here. Make sure we're watching this. This, um, oh, what would you call that? This little area. Somebody built the Colossus, okay. Good for them. Do, 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 do. One thing about Civ 6 is it's faster in terms of the how long it takes the AIs to make their turns. Um, somebody told me it was a function of the graphics more than the um, uh, more than something like um, uh, you know like the algorithms for figuring out what the units are going to do, and I don't know that makes just enough sense that uh, it might be true. I don't know because I do, you know, Civ Five is known for its sort of um, more realistic art, and Civ Six is more cartoony, which a lot of people don't like, and I don't blame it. <laughs> okay, I like being on that hill there. But now I don't like this gap here. Okay, we've got guys coming coming along, so I think this guy will, will shuffle everybody down. Uh, he's gonna stay there. I really like that spot. I see. That's I can see most of Susa. The Persians are gonna come after me. It's gonna be somewhere. I'm probably not gonna go through Ragusa, but I shouldn't be. I think gonna, maybe I should just leave this guy here. Nah. We're fine. You can also move guys around, of course, you know, every turn, but that takes time. Let me get this guy over here where I can see all this stuff. Um, I guess I'm vulnerable to Carthage or somebody coming down through this gap. I wouldn't see it until they were on me, but um, right now I'm not going to bother with it. I'm not going to worry about it. You can't. It's hard to watch everywhere. Um, even though I have open borders with. Carthaginians, I can't enter a tile where they have a unit. 
I can go through a tile if there's a place to land on the other side. But I think I get civil services next turn. Um, Dito wants to renew her renew the salt. By um, it says I only have one salt. I don't. You don't want to trade away your last luxury resource. Luxury resources are what give you happiness for each. They're one of the things that give you happiness for each. But if you have two of them of the same one, like two salt, the second one doesn't give you any happiness. So you want to trade that away, and the AIs would pay big money for it. Okay, civil service, yes. Okay, so now, um, I know it's a little boring when I check cities, but I gotta do it. Um, now the, the equation's different. Now with, um, look at now I'm at plus 12. I think I'd gotten Beijing up to plus eight before, or something like that. So you can see um, these, all these tiles that are working, uh, the river line are producing better than uh, they were before. Yeah, because I remember this was a two one for example, now it's a 3-1. These, these two tiles were both 2-1, now they're 3-1. And so Beijing has got plus 12 food surplus. That's what you need to grow, is you need surplus food uh, to grow. You need as much, every citizen wants two food, and if you have exactly that, that's great. So they're happy, but you're not gonna grow. So, um, and we have a uh, production of 18. And Shanghai, I'm just gonna check this. Okay, plus three food. I do want it to finish its workshop ASAP, so I'm not gonna. Um, why is it working this one, this tile, when it could be working that tile? This tile is a 2 1, this tile is a 3 1. That's weird. I have it on food focus. Let me just go to production focus and back to food and see what happens. There we go. Now it's working the right tiles. Um, I force it to work these two because this is this city really has low production, so I need to need to make a little sacrifice for that. Now our food is a plus four. That's ah, still not very good. Um, I don't actually have a lot of better options. I could go from this tile to this two one. That would increase my food by one. Wouldn't hurt my production. It hurt my gold. My gold's not great either. Only plus ten. Yeah, you know, I think I just got to deal with the fact that this city is going to take a little bit longer to develop into a decent city. So it's got plus four food production, plus ten uh, uh, production hammers, what we call it. Uh, Guangzhou is at plus twelve food and fourteen point nine five production, almost fifteen production. That looks great, and it's going to get greater. Um, what platform do you play this on? Ask Geeky Broken Hoodie. I am playing this on a, on Steam. I'm using a, a PC, and it's a pretty powerful PC because I'm also running uh, streaming software at the same time, OBS and streaming. The streaming takes a lot of graphics capability. So to run uh, the system and stream at the same time, you need a pretty high-end PC. Um, but you could, C6 has an iOS version, so <laughs> I could play C6 on my iPhone. <laughs> I mean, it's a horrible way to play C6. It's a horrible way to play Civilization, that small screen and everything, but um, it's still the best game I have on my iPhone, so <laughs> I'm not complaining. Okay, Tenochtitlan is up to plus nine food and has production of six. Production's not great. Let's. I think I wanna go. Let's see. If I drop two food, I'm still at plus seven. That's not bad. I think I'm gonna move this to here. So I'm at plus seven food and eight production. I could be. It. That seems like a good idea. And uh, all right. Okay, I'm satisfied my city's doing okay. Okay, I finished civil service. Now our next objective, and by the way, just so you see what I have, this um, unlocks Landsnecht, which is um, uh, mercenaries. And you can, um, let's see. Oh, they not they can be purchased through gold. Um, can I, I thought I needed a certain tech to do that. Huh. Um, anyway, they, 
they get to move the turn you buy them. So these guys, you never want to build them unless you just like the surprise attack on your empire you didn't see coming. Um, if you have a bunch of gold, you're lucky enough to have a bunch of gold when that happens. You can buy them and move them the turn they, they uh, land. And they are, they will upgrade. Uh, okay, you know, there's nothing, there's not, they're not bad units or anything. They will never desert you, even though they're mercenaries. Uh, Pikeman is a really, really good uh, military unit. Uh, it's an upgrade from the Spearman. Um, I don't like it as well as the Swordsman because I don't... Its upgrade path is to Lancers and it takes a long time before you get to them. And I don't think Lancers are that great. I mean, they're okay, but I'd rather have Cavalry at that, at that stage. Um, but here's the best, big thing. Your food, inc your farms are increased by one if they have access to fresh water, which means if they're by a river or by a lake, not a coastline that doesn't count. And, um, uh, Tara Smart, no, don't worry about that. Um, oh no, now you got me downloading it on my iPhone. <laughs> Dang it. Yeah, uh, the worst part about playing it, playing Civ 6 on the iPhone is you don't get the, some of the mods, you know, the mods, the Steam mods and stuff that are like quick deals, which is like, I, now that I know about quick deals, by the way, if you don't, you, you need it. Um, uh, if you play it also on a PC, Quick Deals is the best mod ever, and um, it's so painful on the iPhone. That's the most painful part is, it, is playing without it. Okay, I think this worker is going to hang out and watch this area, and um, so I don't need this archer to do it. I've already got my super scout up here watching that area, so I think I'm going to bring him in. Maybe bring them up here and get these get eyes on these hexes here. I just don't want a barbarian to sprout up so close to me. All right. Um, oh yeah, we got to pick our next technology. Okay, we're gonna go for theology, uh, mainly because just just a prerequisite for education. Education is the next really important thing that allows us to build uh, uni Oxford University, which is a wonder. We won't be trying for that, but university, which would add thirty three percent to science and. Um, uh, so, plus two science from jungle time, so you think we probably have some by the Aztec capital. Okay, so um, I'm just going to click on education. I need uh, theology first, but it will uh, just, it will do that one first. It's basically pre-programmed to do that. Okay, let's keep exploring here. I know sometimes I... You know, going out to explore, uh, to see as far into the water, I like doing that because even though it slows down the scouting a little bit, uh, there are some natural wonders out in the water. Every natural wonder you find is worth a permanent plus one to your happiness. So they're worth, it's worth it to look out for them. Okay, we got two Persian units up here. Not enough to be a threat, but that's, uh, Gotta keep our eyes on them. I think what I'll do is come up to here and then have this guy go over to here and then this guy go over there. By the way, can you guys see my mouse? I have no way of checking it from here. When I'm moving my mouse around, can somebody tell me whether or not you can see it? I know it's probably really small, but I can't do anything about that. Let's see. Okay, fine, fine. Let's start going this way. You see it. Oh, good. Good to know. Because I'm always saying, like, oh, here and here and here, because obviously I'm looking right at it, but if you can't see the mouse, that's pretty rude of <laughs> me to be uh, acting like you can. I know it's hard to see. Probably, but um, uh, Monaco and Carthage are allies. Panama City. Uh, yeah, so there's some city states. So, you know, one thing I should probably do is just kind of go down here and see. These are the city states here, and it pops up what the quests are, what they want. They'll make you happy, uh, make them happy. Find a natural wonder. Okay, why well, I'm looking for natural wonders? That's good. Uh, the coins are temporarily. I mean, the main way you can curry. Uh, favor with city states to just give them money, um, and that's different from Civ Six. Civ Six doesn't have that option, uh, and um, 
And if they have this quest, gold gifts are temporarily more effective, then that's that's a, a good time to do that if you have excess cash. But I don't. I'm hoping later in the game I will. But money is often kind of an issue for warmongers because we have to um, maintain a larger armor, army, which is expensive, and we got to save up money for upgrades. Like, I have to be careful about spending my money because eventually uh, it's not going to be for too terribly long before I can upgrade all my composite bowmen into uh, Chokonus, which I will definitely want to do. They want furs, they want jewelry. Meaning all you have to do is get access to it yourself. You don't actually have to give them any. Um, and faith growth. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, yeah, I'm not in a good position to go out and get a bunch of city states as friends. It is. There are a couple of civs, just like in Civ Six, there are a couple of civs in Civ Five that are really good for um, city state shenanigans. Um, that's China's not necessarily one of them. You know, he does have a lot of those African, or I should say, she does. Carthage, uh, Dido, ruler of Carthage, she has a lot of those um, African elephants. <clears throat> Which, um, uh, yeah, so I'm glad I'm not. I was toying with the idea of going attacking her, but I, I think that would be a bad move. I think I would just end up losing a bunch of archers. <laughs> And that would not be pretty. I'm a little, it's it's a little, it's a shame that I don't think I have an, I don't know, boy, Susa Serlix inviting. Yeah, I think, um, I think I'm just going to, look at now, ten Octavia, by this bar up here, it means it's taken damage. So it's probably this, I think there's a bar, this barbarian camp is probably still there, and they're probably still fighting it. And... I'm tempted to go help them, but not really, because, you know, why, why help them out? Gustavus has made peace with Darius. Okay, so now I do have to uh, consider more seriously the possibility that um, the Persians will come after me. Um, it is, you know, these icons here are all the sieves in the game. Uh, you'll notice that Carthage and Persia both have a green halo around them, which means that, that they are friendly to me. They like me. Um, but you also can't trust that. Like, you can't... Um, they will say that, or they will, they will fool you into... Uh, yeah, they, they're, they are not beyond shenanigans, pretending that they like you when they don't. Just checking my borders. You can put your units on sentry uh, so that it doesn't, as you know, as uh, I'm hitting a key to cycle through all my units, so it will skip the unit if it's on sentry or a worker if it's working. Um, but I like to um, force myself to look at the spot because if it's on sentry and another Civ's army comes up by it and goes right past it, it won't wake it up. It'll only wake it up if there's an enemy unit. Well, if the Civ hasn't attacked you yet, they're just strolling along with their army towards your borders. It doesn't It doesn't help. So I like to have a... Um, I take the time to look at each unit and make sure I am seeing what the unit sees. And by not putting one sentry, um, then when I cycle through the units, it does that. Okay, I think this unit is done doing that. Okay. Guang Zhao has grown. Okay. Yep, it's working all its tiles. Good. And Beijing has finished at the Colosseum. Um... Uh, I probably can't build the Circus Maximus yet. That's right, because I don't have a Colosseum yet in Tenochtitlan. Okay, so 
when Tenochtitlan is done with the workshop, I will probably have it work on Coliseum next. In fact, I might as well just go ahead and cue that up. Although, boy, there are a lot of really important things that needs to build. But the Coliseum is for the aid of the whole empire. It needs to build that so that we can add um, plus five happiness to the whole city, uh, to the whole empire. Okay, Beijing, since we finished the uh, Coliseum, Circus is another two happiness, that'd be good. Market is good. Oh, temple. Yeah, I want to build a temple in every city. And I want to build a water mill. Let's do the temple to help get that religion. Help the faith generation so I can buy monasteries with faith, which will help um, my culture and faith further. Okay. Um, I wonder if Attila will give me open borders. This would be a good way to find out if he likes me or is harboring resentment. That's a way you can tell if a civilization says they like you, but they won't do any deals with you, then they don't. Oh, they... What would it take to make this work? I don't see a way to make it work. Okay, he does not... He is not willing to give me open borders at all. Um, I think that means he doesn't like me. Oh, why not? Oh, this worker's done with its thing. Let's see. Um, I'd love to buy some good, like these two tiles, and work them. But I'm gonna like how how long is it gonna be before I get machinery? Okay, machinery is the technology that will let me upgrade my composite bowman to chukonu, uh, with basically crossbows, fancy Chinese crossbows. Um, that tech, to get that tech, I have to get guilds. So we're talking about another 24 turns. Plus, I want to get education and theology first. That's 29, 39, 44. It'll actually be less than because as I'm generating population, I'll get faster and faster producing tech. So um, it's going to be about 40 turns. It's going to be a while. So I could um, spend some money on other things. I want to pop down and clear this fog before we start heading east from there. And this, yep, just looking. Okay, so this worker, what else do we want to work? Um, we've got a lot more tiles developed than we can use. So I'm going to use this guy as something with scout. So I'm going to go down here and look, make sure, just put eyes on more of this territory. There is a barbarian camp here. I'm surprised no barbarians can come over and mess with me. I might... I mean... Let's see. Manila is a city-state. There... If I leave the barbarians there long enough, a couple of different things might happen. Another civ might come take them out. Manila might take them out. A city-state sometimes, will sometimes take out a barbarian camp. Um, but it also helps um deter another sit from settling in that area and um i'd rather leave them alone until because there is also the option that the city state will get so annoyed with the barbarian camp that they will um pay me meaning um they'll pay me to get rid of the camp meaning that if i go get rid of the camp they'll like me more that's what i mean by pay me it um, won't be actual cash okay we're just keeping an eye on the aztecs okay we're Oh yeah, I'm just gonna figure out what to do with this guy. Oh yeah, I'm gonna have him. Actually, I don't... oh, I've got this this spot. I do not want a barbarian camp showing up there, so we're just gonna hang out here and. Okay, Shanghai is got more developed tiles and it's working too, so. You know, I think I am going to go ahead and, um, well, let me do it right now. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and delete one of my workers because every worker costs uh, a certain amount of gold to maintain. And 
So if you have too many workers, like, okay, it's, it's okay to spend a couple of them on scouts. Oh, Persia has built Notre Dame. Oh, 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 that's interesting. Oh. Okay, so the reason I'm going, ooh, ooh, oh, that's interesting. Uh, Notre Dame is one of my favorite wonders in the game. It is uh, because it adds 10 happiness. So it is like the most happy wonder. Most, the thing you can do, the one wonder you can get that will help your happiness more than anything else is Notre Dame. Uh, so, um, and the fact that Persia has it, and Persia is next door, um, that's that's cool. That means that going after Persia, definitely Persia's Persia's my next target. Okay. Can I tell them it's grown? Singapore wants gems. Yeah. Okay, great. They keep on wanting it. Um, okay, um. <coughs> Yeah, I wouldn't like if barbarians spawned there, but I'm more worried about barbarians spawning on my road here. That would be uh, that would be disappointing. Okay. Um, well, they won't let me come into their territory, so I'm going to go here just to spot more, and then we're going to try and go around through this gap here. If they don't expand, I could get cut off here. My scout scout could end up not being able to get off this peninsula. Uh, so we're gonna try and, and uh, avoid that problem. We might as well mine, mine those hills. Oh, I do have an extra bowman coming this way. Okay, this guy can't go back down here. Program him for next turn, okay. I'm going to put him on sentry. Um, I'm going to have work go up here. Let's see. Now I'm just boldly going into hexes that I can't... Or I, I mean, I could lose that worker just by... There could be a barbarian that I don't see until it's too late. <laughs> but, you know, I think I go back to here. There we go. Okay. Go there. Play the fog. Okay, we've seen all of the western part of this uh, continent. So I'm gonna have this scout go up into through here, eventually clear out all the, f you know, this fog up here, find out where there might be more Carthaginian and Persian cities up in here, and, uh, and also city-states. Uh, there are eight civs in the game, which means that there are 16. Uh, in the, by default settings in Civ 5, there's two city-states for every civ. Where in Civ 6 it's 1.5 to 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 11, 12. So there's still four city states to find. That's good. Okay. Yeah, look at that. Beijing is now plus 14 gold. Yeah, I, I want to get my capital really big. And so, and it is. Yeah, and its production is 18. Oops. Is there a mixed production and food spot that I'm not doing? No. You know, I think I do want to make sure that I'm getting this food, this gold, off of this one. Okay, I'm going to move off of one of the 3 1 spots, I guess. Yeah, so I'm going to lose one food and production by going here, but I'll pick up 3 gold. Okay, food's still 18, production's still 18. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's good. I guess I may well start developing some of these spots over here, but I got more tiles than I'm using, so I might be able to clear up another worker at some point. I just, they're just so handy to have around in certain situations. I know it's a drain on the economy um, to have them, but like when I say to go to war, I can use workers to watch borders in other directions. Uh, oh, the Swedes, they're not holding a grudge. They want to trade embassies. Sure, let's do that.
I do like this game. I mean, what what a life. Sit here and play one of my favorite games and stream for Gen Con at the same time. Sometimes I just kick myself. Like, how how did I get such an amazing situation? Oh, Nebuchadnezzar Fizzard finished Oracle. Okay. Try and slip through the gap here. Yeah, let's go ahead and finish. Oh, now there are three Persian units up here, including a pikemen. Pikemen are dangerous. I think I need to maybe start soon prioritize building a couple more military units. Well, I've got this temple. Guangzhou is going to have that temple built soon. Yeah. Oh, hey. Finish off that galley. There we go. Good. Nick, how are we feeling, Field Marshal Adkisson? <laughs> feeling good. I, 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 I have. I'm feeling good. I do have this lingering worry that um, I made a, a wrong decision down in the tech tree. I know you thought it was the wrong decision. It probably was the wrong decision. I know a lot of the guides say prioritize science first all the time. Uh, but um, it might have been a fatal mistake on Deity. I'm hoping maybe Immortal will let me get away with it. We'll find out. How are you doing, Nick? Okay, we're going to go up here. Okay, I didn't lose my work to a sudden barbarian appearance. That's good. Um, you know, I think... Yeah, okay, so this guy's... Okay. Yeah, Nick, just to catch you up, we're, uh, we're, we're not going after Carthaginians. I think those African elephants and just how far away it is. I th we're just going to focus on infrastructure a little bit. And um, when I, I'm going to get the Chokonu here in about 40 turns. Um, upgrade all my archers and go after the Persians, I think. Persians have, have Notre Dame, so that really offsets the happiness problem of a, a bit. Okay, we'll see. Uh, compliment first. I thought your usage of great generals to grab those two Luxes on the edge of the capital was brilliant. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Well, good. Good. Um, let's see. What's this? Uh, production. Figuring out production. Okay, Guangzhou just finished the temple. Um, we could do a market. I do need money. Also need troops. I think I want to build a horse. Pod focus on infrastructure. <laughs> just when I decided to build horsemen. Well, when you go to Liberty as your culture, you need to rush to Aqueduct. You need that 40% growth bonus. Yes, yes. I think I got Aqueducts now in all my cities except for Tenak Tetlan, um, which is, of course, as the as the new as the new city. Uh, it's, it's behind. Okay, we got the workshop in Shanghai. Uh, it's already has a Colosseum. Uh, how? I think market versus temple. I think temple. Get my temple so I can get a super temple. And yeah, this is fine. We're just watching the border. Oh, there's a little pikeman coming out on the hill. Hi, guys. Trying to get my scout out from behind the Babylonians and the Huns. And we have a trading route. Okay, so let's see. There is a way of seeing all the possibilities for trading route. So let's see, wait, am I looking the right place? Oh yeah, we click up here. Up here is where it tells you how many trading routes you trading route units you have versus what your capacity is. So I'm not at full capacity, I'm one out of two, so that would be a good thing that would help my economy a lot is to build my other trading route. Okay, that's a good safety tip. Um, trade routes available and could sort by the most profitable, but these are all cargo ships, which I don't have any. So Tenochtitlan to Panama City is good. It's the best one. Or Beijing to Panama City. Um, is 
almost as good, close, almost the same. And Beijing to Panama City is a lot easier to protect, so I'm gonna stick there where I'm at, going to Panama City. Uh, cargo ship food into capital is fantastically powerful. Yeah, cargo ship. Yeah, yeah. Car cargo. Oh, cargo ship. Oh, food. Yep. I guess I'm on the coast. Really? Interesting. Uh, last suggestion. Remember, you have the National College in capital. If you don't work the academy there, you miss out on it. Oh. Oh. I see i know exactly what you mean oh wow that's a really good tip um okay so take this let's see my science is currently 67 let's see what happens when i grab it 71 oh okay nice increase and let's lock that in so that it keeps doing that good huh good all right and then uh yeah, a cargo ship. So maybe we should build a cargo ship. But you know, then you also then you have to protect that ceiling too. Look at this little Carthaginian. It just sits and sits outside my port, waiting for us to go to war. I I I've noticed. I think my theory is that um, the the Civ Five AIs are much better with their ships than Civ Six. Like I don't have problems with this sort of problem where a Civ 5 is like, oh, I'm just going to park outside your ship. And you know, they're, you do that all the time in Civ 5. They're always like, when you go to war with somebody, there's a good chance they've got a, sh a ship just sitting out there waiting to jump on one of your cargo ships. But that would that's a really interesting idea. So I would have to build a couple of galleys to protect it. Might be, sounds, sounds like a fun idea. But you know, the other side of it is that, you know, one advantage of playing at Pangea is you can, if you want to, just kind of ignore navies, you know, I mean, you just, you know, how much, how much do you save in gold and production um, and opportunity costs on infrastructure if you just don't bother with ships? But, you know, uh, it is nice to build a bunch of uh, frigates and use them to attack port cities. That's always, that's, that's, that's just good. I don't care who you are, that's fine. Mobile artillery. Okay. Yeah, I like, I like my, how my units are spread out in terms of watching borders. It is tempting to run, say, you know, the Aztecs probably aren't giving me any trouble. I, I'm debating uh, whether to go knock out that barbarian camp, but I keep waiting for Manila to pay me to do it, and they're just not cooperating. Oh, there's going to be a city state up there. Ooh. Got out of there. Well, it might be a lot of mountains here. Well, we'll come back down through here. You know, I wonder if I should, you know what I should do? Go chop down these trees just for a little production boost for, Shan boost for Shanghai. Uh, science needs food. Food is worth the cost. But I do not mean to interrupt you, Field Marshal. <laughs> Nick, come on, give me advice. I, I my whole theme of this, this, my, it is actually a main motivation for me is like, hey, if I'm streaming online, somebody's gonna be happy to like give me advice while I'm streaming. <laughs> like, here's how you could do it better, and like that's really cool because then I can get better at my game you know i mean you can go read articles and stuff but you know watch other streamers but i don't know it's just um it's great to, to playing is more fun but if you can play and get advice at the same time that seems pretty good to me yeah 
yeah there's no interrupting this is this is all chat this is this is what it took me a while i've been running a twitch channel for a year it took me about a year to figure out you know it's like what do people like to do on twitch they like to they like to watch people play games and talk about games that's what twitch is for and it's like a year after running a twitch channel i'm like why don't i do a show like that <laughs> okay i'm a slow learner i admit it Open borders with Darius. I don't think I have any. I don't think that helps me in any way. Just helps him spread his culture into my territory. I'm not really trying to get through his cities with anything. Yeah, I think I think a pass, dude. I'll have a spy. Well, if I have a spy, I think I am going to uh, uh, put it. I think that's the, what you do with your first spy, right, Nick? Just put him in your capital. Just to. Although I think I'm probably behind almost everybody on tech, so maybe uh, maybe nobody's going to be trying to um, steal my tech. Okay, all the peace treaties have expired. If you're behind in tech, first buy goes to biggest rival capital. Do you go try and steal tech from them? Steal techs first, for sure. Okay, well, let's do that. I'm probably let me change my mind. Um, Biggest rival tech, but I guess that's Nebuchadnezzar, right? Uh, let's see who's first on tech. Literacy. Yeah, uh, Nebuchadnezzar is best. All right, I'll go for Nebuchadnezzar and steal text. Okay, great. You can scroll in their cities to see. You can scroll in their cities to see. Oh, like, fine. There's Babylon, Acadia, like here, right here. Uh, see if they have text available. I don't know where I would do that scrolling. Yeah, keep scrolling down. But here's Babylon here. Okay, scroll down to the bottom. Potential, oh. If it's checked, that means there's something they have that I don't have. Is that what it means? Uh, uh, I see. Okay, so then Babylon doesn't actually have, well, it's a question mark. Maybe I just don't know. Maybe I'm not friendly enough. Um, Columbia, you know, okay, these are all city states. Susa, Persepolis. Sweden, Stockholm. Okay, so it's just it's showing question marks for all the. Do I need to get open borders with them to see? Maybe. Well, I'm gonna go to a con. Oh, move to. Uh, well, Babylon actually is probably. That's, oh, you need an embassy or a spy in there first. Never mind. Go to the big capital and just bring it. Yeah. Okay. Um, Spy, right? Protects. Okay, cool. Let's go up here, see those. Okay, yeah, it's all mountains except for to the diamond mines there. Just watching the work. Oh, the uh, Brazilians are coming here with a settler. <laughs> Tempting to take the settler, but no, I'm not gonna do that. Okay, I wanna let's see, he's probably gonna build probably gonna build a city right where he's at. On the coast. Might might be too close to a city over here or the river. Um be fun to just try and block him a little bit, but I don't have enough to do that. But be fun with the pop over here. Let's see where we're going. <clears throat> yeah, I see, Nick. I should be like, you know, paying you a free badge or something like that for the tutoring sessions. Like each each session, tutoring. What's the what's the going rate for game tutoring for Civ Five? Let's see. Open borders. No. Is he gonna? 
It's funny how they'll just keep asking and asking sometimes. So. Watching the borders. Let's see where he goes. He might want to go there next to the river. He was going around me, maybe. It'd be fun just to kind of put spokes on his wheels. Yep, more African elephants. Yeah, I think I'm really glad I didn't go after her. Oh, 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 yeah. This, okay, so there's a solid line of mountains here. I need to get back to this gap. <laughs> I'm just happy to help. Thank you. I think Civ 5 is an excellent game to teach and learn. Game systems are good to analyze. Yeah. Well, I appreciate the... Uh, oh, I got a new unit from Sighton. And a pikeman. Hey, I'll take it. I'll take a pikeman. Uh, well, good. I'm glad. I, yeah, it, it it probably is fun. I'm sure it's fun. I love teaching this game. It's it's fun to play. It's fun to learn new tricks. It's it's a big enough game that I, you know you can play it for years and still be learning stuff. So that's a good question for you, Nick. Pikeman versus swordsman. A uh, pikeman is a little stronger than a swordsman, but I like the the and doesn't require iron. But I like the promotions that um the the upgrade tree better for swordsmen i mean eventually become infantry and so on and lancers i don't think are nearly as good as cavalry i'd be curious what you think about that okay let's see beijing finish the temple good watermill is probably good plus two food yeah watermill's really good to do that okay and wang zhao finish the horseman good Okay, let's get back infrastructure. We're good. Garden is going to be important eventually, but probably not yet. Okay, let's get the market going. It really needs some economy. Yeah, economy sucks. Okay, now what I like to do with horsemen, they're fast. And so they're like a really great unit to have in reserve. You know, put them kind of in the middle of your empire on a road. All my cities are connected by roads. And this horseman here, he's within about a turn or two of, he's within two turns move of, of every city, maybe one turns move of every city I have. So fight breaks out and get him into the thick of it in a hurry. Probably could use another one. Horsemen's aren't super tough, though. <laughs> yeah, I think. Uh, oh, hey, we found a uh, Sierra de Patasi. Oh, that's a great wonder. That's the one that, isn't it? Isn't that the one that's like 10 gold? Yeah, 10 gold. Oh, nice. What? Nobody's belt next to it yet? That's crazy. It's crazy. By the way, I'm like freezing to death. I'm like in this room and the air conditioner's cranked. I don't know, maybe there's a thermostat I could go mess with, but I don't wanna. It's a convention center room. I don't wanna mess with anything. Uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna put this pikeman here, kind of in the middle. A couple of nice units. Pikeman's not as fast as the horseman, but it's good to have. I feel like, you know, good to get enough units that I'm patrolling my borders and have uh, something of an assault group. Um, let's see. Advanced player never even builds a single swordsman or great swordsman. Pikes do a better job. Okay. <laughs> great swordsman. <laughs> really? No, I don't. I know the swordsmen aren't that good, but they, the upgrade path, eventually musketmen, eventually infantry. Um, I don't know. I just I just like the upgrade. The the upgrade's better than um, pikemen. You have to wait a long time, and then you get lancers. And I don't know. Lancers just don't seem as good as cavalry. Okay, but you're okay with the horsemen? I belt. You're okay with the the horsemen? I do like pikemen in their era. I mean, at this era right now, just build the new ones. All that gold is better for science buildings. <laughs> <laughs> Playing for fun. Yeah, trust me, Nick, I play for fun, for sure. <laughs> um, okay, I, I get ya, I get ya. Um, 
yeah, pikemen in this era are just really good. Okay, Beijing's at 10 citizens. Nice. Okay, good. Um, let's make sure I'm still running a good surplus. 14. Natural one. Oh, yeah, because we found that wonder. We got the bonus with Sidon. Where are we at with Sidon now? We are allies with Sidon. I love being allies with um, the militaristic ones. Just give you a couple of... It's always like a little surprise gift. Hey, you got a free military unit. Who? what is it? <laughs> That's how I got my pikemen. Now, I wouldn't go off and spend money getting, one of, getting a militaristic... Um, uh, city-state ally, but when it happens, it's, it's it's a nice, nice little thing. Okay, borders all seem secure. Persians got a little bit of a military up there. Oh uh, yeah, and there. <laughs> I think I definitely slowed down that Brazilian city by at least a turn or two. Okay, let's. Totally agree. Aligning with the military CS is a phenomenal game goal. You get a Lux and you get it pretty, much, pretty frequently. It's good. Okay, good. 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 Good to know. Um, let's see. Am I, I'm going to check and make sure I'm using all the... I have enough tiles to develop for my population. Uh, let's see. Would be... I'm going to probably want to get that one built for long because it is going to be a good farm spot on the river. Actually, this one would be a good farm spot on the river too. There's ones up here. Yeah, but I just I don't have much money, so I'm not going to be buying tile, I don't think, anytime soon. Oh, yeah, almost. I didn't have eyes on that spot. Not good. Yeah, you know, I think I see your point about the gold you spend on maintaining those swordsmen and um, great swordsmen, and they're not great units. Yeah, I, I see your point. I do have one swordsman, though. I'm not going to delete it. I'm going to keep it around. I think maybe I'm going to delete another worker. I've got one. Well, how many workers do I have? I have. I'm gonna look at this thing. Here. Let's see. I have five workers, four cities. That's definitely one more name. Okay, I'm just gonna get rid of these workers. Ah, oh, help my economy. Definitely. Shanghai has grown. Okay. Persia now ally with Sidon. Oh, because it has more influence. Yeah, well, okay. That was... Um, how much more do they have? Than me? Let's see. I still get a military unit every 29 turns for being friends. I lost the luxury resource, but... Uh, I'm looking for the pop-up that will tell me what I need. Maybe it's if I go to it here. Friends, 74, Eastern, your influence, blah, 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 blah. Here we go. That's it. Okay. I I mouse over the icon for the, the city of the Israel. I need 24 extra. <clears throat> Life, strategy games are great to develop real-life skills analysis because they really, really reinforce opportunity cost as a dominant concept 
Yeah, you want to do everything, but you can't, so you have to learn to rank and analyze the best values. Yeah, I agree. Like how to spend your your calories. Do I want the ice cream? Or do I want the steak? Uh, let's see, let's go ahead and grab one of these other tiles. They're not the great farm tiles, but might as well read might as well do it. Yeah, I think Civ especially does that. Oh, we got a bit of a Babylonian army here. You guys should go attack Brazil. <laughs> okay, nothing there. Where is this guy going? Is he gonna put a city over here? Huh. I'm not sure I really like that idea. Maybe I, you know these guys aren't doing anything useful. Let's have them come down here and, and um, put some uh, friends, herd him away from that city. Oh, does undermine the great idea of having a military that's ready to react. So I go and try and herd settlers. But that's also a good idea. To, I really don't want to see Brazil built a city right here on this river. I mean, that is one of the challenges in, in, in this game. If there's open territory, civs are going to try and build cities there. And you can waste a lot of time running around trying to stop them. Oh, we found Vancouver. Another city state. I think we broke free from that potentially, you know, from that issue of potentially being blocked by mountains and civs that won't give us open borders. So that's good. My scout is back on the loose over there. Liberty wants to go wide to five or six cities. Um, but I'm kind of thinking those include taking capitals, right? I mean, you think it's a good idea for me to build a city up here? Nick? I mean, it seems like I got four now. I mean, it's always so hard if you build that city, then all the things that you want to build that require you to have something in every city, you know, like you can't have a you know, a super temple until you get a temple in every city, then those become so hard to build. No, capitals are better. But if Brazil builds it, you can take it later, i.e. a hundred turns later. <laughs> yeah, let them, yeah, let them develop it. Oh, there's another barbarian camp down here. Uh, there's Brazil. Okay, they settle. I don't mind them having settle on this river. Um, but they're thinking territorial expansion in this direction. They're probably they're probably going to try and settle here eventually. But I mean, I kind of can't. I, I can kind of go around it. But let's go up here and. Well, maybe I just leave that camp there to harass the Brazilians. It's not, you know, it's no skin off my neck, I think. Yeah, I think, um, I think I'll just leave that there for the Brazilians to worry about. And, oh, Serpus Maximus is now available. That must mean that uh, Tenecta unfinished their Colosseum. Uh, okay, um, 
not going to build it here though. It's too slow. I need to build it in Guangzhou or Beijing where I have higher, faster production. So we're going to wait a little bit on that. Um, aqueduct. Need the aqueduct there. In Shanghai market. It's good. So, Nick, since you're being so free with advice, I, I gotta use this as much as possible. What, um, how soon, where do you put amplif uh, amplifiers? Um, what am I thinking of? Amphitheaters and the culture buildings. I tend to kind of wait until I can just build the first two or three all, all in sequence. I usually don't build them this early but I'm curious if I'm making a mistake. Like it's, they're each worth one culture. So if I build all four um, amphitheaters, that would increase my culture from 14 to 18. I suppose that's pretty worth it. But I also want to get, uh, get, my, uh, get my market going a bit. I mean, I, I think, you know, Nick, I think you, you hit on, I think the core question of building in Civ five, six, whichever one is the priority list. Like which which of the infrastructure do you build first? Um, the mini game of culture buildings is that they are worst bang for your for your buck. Expert players do not build them unless you're only doing a culture win. Food is priority one. Production goal culture building for last. Okay, I don't feel so bad about ignoring him. <laughs> All right, cool. Good, you just gave me permission to ignore culture buildings. That's great advice. I like that advice. Uh, okay, still two units up there, that's fine. I think we're gonna ignore that camp for now and just kind of come, come back here. Science is top. The other three help get science. Culture does nothing. Well, you get, come on, you get some good policies. I love finishing, I mean, it, rationalism, right? Isn't rationalism really important to get? And if you finish uh, commerce, you get the huge happiness bonus at the end, which is really good for warmongers. But I suspect maybe you're not saying that it's worthless, just less, it's a lower priority. I kind of want to keep an eye on I don't know. I don't know if I should be over here messing around. Who knows? Just about waiting right now. Do you know what that most cost efficient way to get culture in mid and late game? Uh, let's see. The most. Uh, oh, um, culture of city states? Is that, is that the answer? Is that, is that the right answer? Bingo! Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I love getting culture city states. At some point, you start getting enough gold um, surplus going. Um, I'll, uh, yeah, yeah, the military ones are fun, but the culture city states are what I tend to go after if I can. Uh, I mean, you, you usually, eventually, you can grab one or two. Uh, okay, so the water mill. Finish the water mill. Maybe I should get that cargo ship. Or I'm gonna. Okay, so if I'm gonna think seriously about that cargo ship, I probably need at least one, maybe two galleys. I mean, as long as I'm watching this train, wait, I thought I had a guy down here watching this train. I do. I guess as long as I'm watching this much of the train, a barbarian ship is probably not going to come into this area because the nearest barbarian camp that can be built is up here. I mean, unless there's some island off the coast here somewhere I don't know about. Um, so anybody, Nick knows, I'm sure knows what I'm doing, but let anybody else here is curious. I'm looking at, since um, Nick has wisely suggested that I get a cargo trading ship and that I base it in Shanghai and run a trading, uh, trading route to Beijing or vice versa. 
they got to base it. Anyway, oh, um, uh, that is um, uh, to get uh, to send food to Beijing, and by doing that, um, it'll really help Beijing grow and ultimately help my science. But it'll be vulnerable to being pillaged. So if I go to war with any of these civs that have ships parked off my coast, <laughs> just hoping that I'll do exactly that, then oh, I'll need to have galleys. But until I'm at war with them, maybe I don't have to worry about it. Uh, let's see. Um, build two cargo ships and feed both cities. It's like adding four free farms to each city. Uh, Okay, interesting. Well, I've got a, I've got one. Uh, yeah, that's a, okay. When I get it under trade route capacity. All right, I think I'm gonna build one now. That sounds fun. We're gonna build a cargo. Let's see, I just wanna make sure I have my basics. Let's build a market first. Build a market first and I'll do the cargo ships. Okay, let's just get this horseman back on the road where he can go wherever I need him. Well, they should keep this pikeman here in case of barbarian. I don't want them pillaging my farm. Oh, let's see, is that a set? No, it's a cargo ship. He's running a, a, I'm not a, a caravan somewhere. Find out. Okay, let's head up this way. It's, ooh, barbarian horsemen up there. Yeah, I don't want to run into any barbarians with my scouts. Well, I love the <laughs> laughs and laughs. I need to pin the food, hammer, and gold comment. <laughs> Same kind. <laughs> uh, okay, so you're saying it prioritize the cargo ships because it's going to give you more food, which is going to give you more science. Okay, I just want to get those basic infrastructure things built. Um, uh, people like coal. Oh, I'm down near the bottom. That's okay. I mean, I am an entrepreneur in real life. You, you have to understand if I, if I, you know, appreciate the value of gold, or maybe over appreciate the value of gold. Okay, we finished the market. <laughs> uh, let's see. I don't see anything that's going to help me with food or hammers or gold here. I am aware. <laughs> oh, fun. Okay, well, I'm not going to build a caravan because that could have been a cargo ship if I built it elsewhere. Oh. Hey, wow, I've got, I think, the basics I need. Stables, are they worth holding? I guess if you have a lot of those. Um, uh, I'm curious what your rule of thumb is. My rule of thumb on stables is if I have at least two things that would benefit from it. So I've got sheep here. Um, and that's it. I don't see any prospect for more. So I tend not to build unless I have at least two buildings that will benefit from it. Um, and so a stable gives it helps all your pastures grow one production, but I only got one, so I'm probably not going to build it. I am going to need gardens eventually, but I don't need to share. I think I'm going to build in a military unit. Do I want to catapult? I think I'm going to want one more pikeman when I go up to the Syrians. The Persians, excuse me. Two is a good rule of thumb. That said, any city that becomes the biggest military city is worth a stable, as knights are a good unit mid-game, building in 15% faster is a good rep. Okay. Huh. 
Oh, interesting. Well, I've already got one horseman, so I'm probably going to need. I don't know how many more, how many knights I can end up building. Yeah, I think I'm going to happy with the pike. I'm glad I'm. I'm glad it's a good rule of thumb. It's good to know. It's good to get something right. I don't know why I'm leaving that guy over by Brazil. It's just, just see what's going on over there. <clears throat> okay, so as in your capital ends up building science and wonders and gold buildings. So, so often city number two is a good production city is pumping out units. So for me, that would be Guangzhou because that's the, that's, it's got the, the Victoria advantage, and it's got lots of hills and, and various stuff. It's got lots of woods I could go chop down to, but. So Nick, are lumber mills as bad as everyone says? I mean, they seem pretty bad in Civ 5. They, they're amazing in Civ 6, but in Civ 5, they seem pretty bad. Just chop down all the trees. Oh, look at that horseman. I can't resist taking a shot at him. Boom. I know there's barbarians over there, but I can't resist. I gotta see every tile. Oh, gosh. Because you never know, the one tile you don't reveal turns out to have aluminum, and you miss it later. Now there are two Persian pikemen. And a Brazilian horseman. Let's see, exactly. So stables are solid building, lumber mills are bad because of the map, but food is so important. A lumber mill on a non River Hill is okay. Otherwise, farms and mines. Education. Okay, I think it's time to switch everybody to working on universities. Okay, university. Python can wait. Uh, university, uh, maybe we'll go ahead and finish the aqueduct in only four turns, sure. Um, Beijing, university. Uh, I don't think it's the market's worth working, waiting on. And university. Okay, we got. Almaty under attack. Okay, so we got education. So that means it is time, I think, to beeline to machinery so that we can get ironworks, yes, but Chukonu. Chukonu. I really need to get some economy going. So I'm not going to have the money to upgrade them. Hmm. Okay. Let's pop over there. Shoot at that guy. I think I do want to get that camp. I at least want to be able to see that hex, so maybe I have to clear the camp in order to be able to see it. Uh, okay, there's a fresh barbarian pikeman. 
my scout, the leader of my scouting unit, is telling the men and women, it is time to move on. Our primary mission is scouting. Fighting fight pikemen, way, way down a priority list. Okay. All right, go back to parenting, Nick. Thank you. I appreciate it. Your advice. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, this is fun. It's really good to be here. I'm probably going to abort soon, too. Um, it'll be a shorter than usual session. I have a, um, uh, for one thing, it's just really cold in this room. I should, I, who would think you'd need a sweater in Indianapolis during, uh, in, in July? Well, if you go in a building, you know, that's, that's what happens. All right, we're going to go up here. Keep going. I don't know. But I'm having so much fun playing. I don't want to stop. Oh, here we go. Let's just take that. That. Uh, where I can. Hey there. Oh, am I, in, am I in your way? I'm streaming. Hi, you want to say hi to the internet? <laughs> I was just talking about uh, leaving, stopping actually. So I think I'm going to be done. Yeah, I think I'm going to be done for today. Uh, so thank you for showing up and watching me here on Gen Con TV. I am Peter Agnes and this is Peter vs. Machine. As you know, if you've been watching, I appreciate you stopping by. Um, I'm going to call it a day. Uh, so I can go get warm because it's freezing in this room, um, but it's also two hours, so that that's good. Uh, I do have some things to do to get ready for Gen Con because Gen Con is is coming at us like a freight train now. Uh, so it's very very exciting. Well, this has been a fun session. Uh, thanks uh, thanks to Nick coming along. This is working. My secret plan is working. I figured if I started streaming and playing games, people would give me advice and help me learn how to get better at these games. And that's exactly what's happening. So, all right, I am going to um, click on, thanks for watching screen. That's the next scene. All right, thank you.